float like a balloon. You see, it's never too late and it's never too soon. Take it from me, it's I right to be in living color. And how would you feel knowing prejudice was obsolete? And all mankind danced to the exact beat. And at night it was safe to walk down the street. In living color. Is yours and what's yours is mine. In living color. And how would you feel knowing everybody was different? From thin to thicker through thicker thin. And egotistical trips was put to an end. In living color. The moon float like a balloon. You see, it's never too late and it's never too soon. Take it from me, it's I to be in living color. And how would you feel knowing prejudice was obsolete? And all mankind danced to the exact beat. And at night it was safe to walk down the street. In living color. to the Living Color. I want to thank all the people out there who sent all those wonderful letters after seeing last week's show. I really appreciate it. Before we get the party started, I always got to say hello to the man who makes the butts bounce, the king of beats, DJ SW1. <laughs> and of course, we can't forget the lovely ladies of the Living Color, my fly girls. Carrie Ann, Deidre, Lisa, Carrie, and Michelle. We got a great show for you tonight. I want you to chill with us for about a half. Let's get this party started right. Go. I want to be vanilla. No, you can't be vanilla. I am always vanilla. No, but you can't be vanilla two days straight. Why not? Because you are Germany and I'm from French. Oh, now I get it. Makes sense Makes to sense. me. Millie Vanilli commercial, take one. Hello, we are Milly Vanilli. You know, a lot of people don't understand the enormous success of Mili Vanilli. And neither do we. <laughs> but we are here today to tell you that you too can be Mili Vanilli with lots of positive energy and our new do-it-yourself at home, Mili Vanilli Kid. That is right. In just 10 minutes, count on five, 10. You didn't think I could do that, huh? Ten minutes, you two can look and sound just like Mili Vanilli. Tell them what they get, Vanilli. Well, for only $39.95, you get this. Mili Vanilli hair. Very easy to apply. And dye it whatever color you like. Plus, you'll get this. Mili Vanilli eyes that will give you Positive energy. <laughs> what else? Let's not forget our terrible accents. You'll also get this. That's right. You listen to these cartoon characters. Pepe Le Pew, Boris and Natasha, Elma Fad. <laughs> <laughs> and you are almost ready to be Mini Vanilli. No, but not yet. No, no. <laughs> First, you go out and see the latest, hottest, freshest, exciting dances, but don't do them. No, no, no. Do, do this, this instead. <laughs> now you are doing Milli Vanilli. So get a friend. Because it takes two jerks to be Milli Vanilli. <laughs> and remember, don't, don't forget, forget our number. So act now, because we are almost out of style. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
send $39.95 to Milli Vanilli, P.O. Box 227, Paris, California, 90029. It's the Arsenio Hall Show, starring Arsenio Hall. And here's Eddie Murphy's best friend, and don't you forget it, Arsenio! begin the show without introducing a very good friend of mine. Stopped in tonight. We we're hanging out at the China Club last night. A real party animal. Won't you please give it up for my main man, Pope John Paul. <laughs> great show. So, with no more delay, let's get busy! Yeah. Oh. Oh, now, I'd like to introduce my first guest. A very, very special man. Very talented. He's just written a book. He's in a new film. And running for his fourth term as mayor of Washington, D.C., would you please give it up for a very good friend of mine, Marion Barry. <laughs> Get right into it. Now, you're in the press a lot lately. You've had beautiful women inviting you to hotels. People following you everywhere you go. What's it like to be a sex symbol? Uh, I don't think you understand, Arsenio. I don't consider myself a sex symbol. I do consider myself a man who's been wrongly accused of a crime, and I'm here tonight to clear my name. All charges against me are false. There's been no proof of any wrongdoing on my part. Hey, you, wake up! Yes. So, I haven't read it, but my people tell me you've written a book. Uh, well, I didn't write a book. I was booked. <laughs> on possession of an illegal substance. But that's not the image I'd like to portray here tonight. I'm about the business of government. Yes. Uh, can we talk about my re-election campaign already? Oh, Eddie's here? I said already. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get a little confused because you know Eddie is my best friend. <laughs> And to all the white people out there who don't know, Eddie Murphy is only the biggest movie star in the world. <laughs> and I know the black people saying out there going, I know who Eddie Murphy is. I see Eddie Murphy on TV. Come Oh, boy. So, where will you be appearing next? Uh, well, this Friday I'll be appearing in front of the grand jury. <laughs> Nothing. 
thing. I just like to do that after every third question. So, I understand you're in a new film. Uh, now wait, no, see, they told me you wasn't supposed to ask me about that. Ah, uh, brother, no disrespect to Morgan Freeman or Denzel Washington, but brother, I hear you are smoking. Wait, no, I'd rather yeah. not talk about that right Sandy, now. do we have a clip? I've got it right here, Sam. Kick it. Strive to be the best you can be. <laughs> Michael Wolf, take us home with some of that nasty booger nose funk. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome all the way from Detroit, the Motor City, Homeboy Choir. How does the show look to you so far? Well, Larry, I score the show pretty even. So far, the audience has been able to take everything that the cash has dished out. If we look at the tail of the videotape, we'll see that the audience outnumbers the cast 30 to 1. Let me ask you something. If you were in this cast's shoes right now, what would Sugar be doing? Well, Larry, like I said, this is a very, 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 very tough audience. And remember what they did to Frank's place. If I the cast right now, I'd be going for the knockout. Like I did against Marvin Hagler. He scared me. He looked like a giant milk dud. This milk dud had arms and was jabbing. Uh, Ray? I was jabbing back. All right. Only thing I could do. Well, looks like we're about ready to start that That's fifth round. To use a Ladies and gentlemen, the great way, Sugar Ray Leonard. I Thank can you. Use bigger Ray. words than they usually use. Captain's log, start A14. We're being pulled towards a hostile planet. I'm hoping that Scotty will be able to activate the backup control system. Good, I feel so vulnerable. Captain, I'm picking up some strange signals. Something about intergalactic oppressors, sir. Captain, intruders are approaching the bridge, sir. Who are you? I am the Minister Louis Farrakhan. Bob, who is he? A former Calypso singer, Captain. 
who later became leader of a 20th century African-American religious sect known as the Nation of Islam. If you'd like to buy some incense. Bean pie, my brother? No, thank you. What do you want? I've come to warn your crew. Warn, warn your, your crew. Of their enslavement. Enslavement. Aboard this vessel. Mm-hmm. That's poppycock. These people are perfectly free to do anything they like. It is that same lie that kept Elvis the king. That made that poor child Latoya Jackson think she could sing. It is that same lie that's got white boys rapping and the fat boys acting. Hey, mister, you can't go in here and talk to me like that. Ahura, get me Starfleet Command. Yes, Captain. Oh, my Nubian princess. How long have you placed his cause? I watch the show every week, and all I see is the back of your nappy wig. Oh, Hora, Starfleet, now! Well, wait a second. He's right. I've been sitting here for 15 years with this damn thing in my ear. It ain't got one raise yet. Is that all I'm good for? To be your little secretary? Or your occasional chocolate fantasy? You get up off your flat butt and get Starfleet your damn self, because I Yes, sister. Mr. Zulu, call Scotty. Tell him to get this man out of here. Wait a minute, Mr. Zulu. Before you touch that dial, answer me this question. Who does the laundry around here? I do. Mr. Zulu, well, you call me Buddha head and pie face in front of everybody. I've been in space all this time, and I haven't had one woman yet. You even take the ugly ones, Captain. My loins are about to explode. I want to do the nasty. That's right, rise up, Mr. Spock, my friend, we've got to do something. Why do you say we, Caucasoid? It's obvious, Captain, that... Minister Farrakhan is right. Spunk, are you out of your falcon mind? Well, logically speaking, Captain, I am the strongest and most intelligent person aboard this vessel, yet I'm only second in command. Mm-hmm. I should be captain. And I'm also a better director than you. <gasps> Can't you see it's discrimination? You get off my ship, buddy. <laughs> Put your puny weapon down, Captain. You cannot harm me. My people have survived 400 years of slavery. Slavery! 300 years of apartheid. Apartheid! And 25 years of the Jeffersons in syndication. (laughs) Go to your room. Oh, I love it when I do that to them. (laughs) Nubian princess, call Sylvia Soul Food Shack, make reservations. I got a taste for some blackened white fish. (laughs) Mr. Sulu, what are you gonna have? Sylvia. (laughs) Well, all right then, my horny Asian brother, Warp Factor 5. We're going home, destination 125th Street.
Hi, I'm Hope Colborn. Every morning around 7.30, I picks up Miss Daisy and I takes her to her favorite place. Oh, slow down now. Yes, Miss Daisy. Driving like a madman. See, we didn't always get along so good. Miss Daisy don't like nobody doing nothing for her, especially no color. She what they call independent. The real truth is Miss Daisy don't drive so good. She crashed up her car, ooh, something bad. So bad that Master, uh, what's the name? Uh, you know, Dan Aykroyd. He uh, hired me to take care of her and give her some companionship. Now, what way y'all going? Yes, Miss Daisy. <laughs> yes, Miss Daisy. She not that all that bad. Just a little lonely and wrinkled up. <laughs> but I understand her. And I know how to make her happy. Because I gives her just what she needs. Miss Daisy, coming to a theater near you. Oh, you're my best friend. Thank <laughs> you.